Hey, my name is Dave, and this is Carrier Pigeon episode number two. And we're recording today from my room in Ashbury Heights in San Francisco, California. Uh, what is Carrier Pigeon? It's a short show that's dedicated to, uh, centered around conversations about design, multimedia, uh, the, and the surrounding culture associated with these type of things. Uh, what people do is they send in their questions and comments, and we talk about them here on the show. So if you have a question or comment, feel free to send it in to pigeon at okaysamurai.com, and uh, let me know what you think of the show, or uh, if you have a question for a future episode, please feel free to send that in, and we'll try to answer it. I don't pretend or claim to be an expert on any of this stuff. Uh, it's just me blabbing, and, and in fact, I'm a pathological liar. You really shouldn't listen to anything that I say. Um, but hopefully it's interesting and entertaining enough that uh, everyone finds something to enjoy. Uh, so last time we did a, I tried an audio podcast, and this time trying a little video uh, thing as well. So I've got my laptop here. So if I'm looking down, that's what I'm looking at. And I uh, got a lot of great feedback on the first episode. People seem to enjoy it, and uh, I'll keep on trying to do these things if, uh, if someone out there thinks they're interesting. So uh, we got a lot of good stuff today. Um, got some questions about Flash, designer salaries, creative motivation, zombies, Mario Kart, teaching, and Harry Potter. So we've got a diverse set of stuff to talk about, so let's get right to it. First question. Hey man, why do you feel that Atlanta is the best place you've ever lived? I mean, I know you feel this way, but I guess I'm just wanting to hear you say that you miss me. No, but seriously, what do you think of Flash and its effect on the web? And this comes to us from my friend Casey from Atlanta, Georgia. So, yeah, I sincerely enjoyed my time in Atlanta. It was great, and I was lucky a couple months ago I got to uh, head back there and visit and see some familiar faces. Um, so it's always good to, to see that. If you've never been there, you got to go and you've got to check out um, the New World of Coke Museum and especially the Georgia Aquarium and the Giants of the Deep exhibit especially is just fantastic. Uh, it's a great place. Definitely worth the trip. Um, Flash, I think Flash is great. I, you know, it's proven that it's nice for multimedia experiences. So you're able to take video, sound, interaction, uh, animation, and gaming and sort of mix all these different things together to create interesting experiences. And, you know, there's an argument out there, uh, how should you make websites? Should it be Flash or HTML or a mixture of both? And uh, a lot of people find Flash distracting. They say, you know, you have to wait through loading screens and animations to get to information. And sometimes I agree with that, you know. Uh, like, you don't want to, for the New York Times, you don't want to wait uh, to read a story while letters are zooming in and exploding and then a dragon flies by the screen and turns and says, Roar, here's your awesome story, I hope you enjoy it. Uh, in that case, yeah, bad idea to use Flash. Terrible. Um, but I also think it's wrong to think that just one method uh, is best. I think it's just a different type of communication experience. And, you know, movies aren't just limited to the scripts and songs aren't just limited to the notes and lyrics. Um, they add in the element of time and that really changes things. It's a whole different um, sort of experience. So I don't think websites should just be limited to simple deposits of clean, straightforward information. I think there's plenty of, uh, plenty of room for multiple forms of communication, and it's all really going to depend on the content, what you're trying to communicate, what kind of story you're trying to tell. So hopefully that uh, answers your question, Casey. Moving right along. Hey, Dave, did you ever have trouble working with people uh, that are totally unmotivated or unprofessional? My design department coworkers are unenthusiastic about design and always ask me the most trivial things. It's frustrating. They hardly know the software and hardware and have an unprofessional workflow. Yet, they want to work in the creative field. They have no ambition to learn all this stuff. I tried to raise design motivation with free creative projects, but they don't even bother with that, so the projects are just collecting dust. What are your thoughts on that? Keep rocking. David from Germany. Uh, in, a, in, in an office setting, I think you're always going to have to work with people who have different motivations or workflows. Like, uh, my coworkers probably think I'm insane because I have all these bulletin boards filled with sketches, concept art, printouts, and that sort of thing. So, um... So to the outside observer, I probably look like a serial killer or something like that. Uh, but it's, uh, you know, I think you're always going to run into these sort of issues no matter where you are. So dealing with them uh, professionally is important. Um, you know, if you're trying to do, you said you were trying to do some free creative projects uh, to get people interested. And everyone's going to have different motivations. That's really hard to do because what might motivate you might not motivate someone else. Um, so unless there's free pizza, that always helps too. Um, but I think if something like this is bothering you, you can definitely be proactive in the solution. And, you know, if people are asking you every five seconds for tips about Photoshop, uh, so they're asking how to make lens flares or something awesome like that, um, then, you know, maybe you're able to make an internal resource or a website or something like that that 
uh, guides people to tutorials and videos and FAQs and stuff like that and uh, have all the information there uh, as a central place for people to check out. So, um, And I'd also recommend uh, reading, if you haven't, Check out this book uh, by Dale Carnegie, uh, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's been around since like 1936, so there's got to be something right about it. And uh, it's just good practical advice for communicating with people, even though the, t the title sounds really selfish and all about you, but it's actually just uh, really good practical advice about interacting with people. So hopefully that helps. David, thanks for your question. Moving on, we've got some rapid fire questions from Jeff from Washington, D.C., so let's get right to it. You're banished to a deserted island for the next year. There's no electricity on the island. What three things do you bring with you? That's easy. Machete, surfboard, and Jack Russell Terrier. Next, what is your favorite kill Killer Instinct character and why? So he's talking here about Killer Instinct, which is the old school Nintendo fighting game. And uh, I got to go with Fulgore. He's, uh, he's a freaking robot and he can make a machine gun come out of his head. So uh, that's pretty awesome. Uh, third question, uh, favorite instrument to write songs on and why? Acoustic guitar or a piano? Um, I'd say piano. I think it's the first instrument I learned how to play in uh, starting in the third grade, and I think it still feels the most natural for, uh, for songwriting. Uh, Battle of Battle Modes. Mario Kart on Super Nintendo, Mario Kart on Nintendo 64, or Mario Kart on GameCube? Uh, you know, they're all good, and if I have to go with one, I'd say it's the classic Super Nintendo version. Um, you know, we used to play it all the time growing up, and I, we knew all the little tricks and physics, like, you know, the curve of a red turtle shell, or the way that a green shell ricochets off the wall or something like that. Uh, and finally, last question, do you want an iPhone? Uh, yeah, you know, I might be the only person in San Francisco who doesn't have one, but I'm going to wait until my uh, current phone plan runs out and wait for an updated version, I think, before plunking down all that money. But uh, yeah, from the ones that my coworkers have that I've been able to fool around with, I think it's a really cool uh, um, device and I definitely want one. So. Eventually. So thanks for the, uh, the million questions, Jeff. I appreciate it. Uh, next, moving on. Hey, Dave. I'm new out of college to the world of design, and I love it. After reading an article in How Magazine about salary changes in the creative world, it began to spark questions in my head. As I have followed your website for the past few, last few months and have seen how much you've relocated, how is the salary base for graphic and interactive designers changing depending on area, such as Atlanta to Baltimore to New York and now to San Francisco? Thanks, Dave, and keep the show on the air. It is good stuff. And this is Eric from Greenville. So thank you very much, Eric. I'm glad you enjoy it. And uh, if you haven't checked it out, you got to check out this site that's done by the a by uh, AIGA, and it's called designsalaries.com. And here you can find it's a great resource. You're going to find all the current stats. They just came up with the 2007 uh, survey, and you're going to be able to see uh, sort of a ballpark figure of uh, what what you should expect going into you know being an art director in Ohio or something like that. You'll have a, a sort of um, a basis for, to go by. So if you're going to an interview, that's really valuable information. And uh, just in general, though, salaries are going to rise with the cost of living, and that's not just the creative industry. That's pretty much everywhere. So um, definitely check out that site. I think that will answer your question better than I can. Uh, moving on, how would you deal with the army of zombies that is sure to strike at the darkest hour this coming All Hallows Eve? This is from last month's uh, question of the month winner, Kevin, from Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, that's a really good question. And uh, I, I, I think I would play a lot of Resident Evil in preparation, uh, make sure my headshot skills are up to par. And then I'd probably try to gather a small army, you know, uh, maybe just tell them in San Francisco, say there's like a dig party going on and Kevin Rose is going to be there and just everyone will like, you know, come over. And uh, then I'd probably stake out in the clock tower at the ferry building downtown and uh, have a zip line to get away boat uh, just in case things get crazy um, over in the bay. So that's the plan. When the zombies come, I'm going to be ready. Thanks for the question, Kevin. Uh, and next, moving on. Hi Dave, where do you see yourself in five years and what is the ultimate goal in your design career? Also, do you plan to do a follow-up to okdave.com with the postgraduate design work? Uh, best regards, and this is from Doug. And in five years, I, I honestly don't know. I, you know, if you told me five years ago that I would be doing a video podcast in San Francisco, uh, I probably would have said, number one, what the heck is a video podcast? And then secondly, I probably would have told you you were crazy. Uh, I, I don't know. So I, I think eventually, ultimately, after I've, I've gained some more experience and um, have been in the industry for a little longer, I think I'd like to get involved in education somehow, sp specifically graphic design and education uh, sorts of things. So 
Um, I, you know, the second part, no, I don't think okdave.com is going to get updated. Uh, it's, I feel like it's its own little entity, it's its own thing, and uh, that was sort of my portfolio center experience. And if I do another site, uh, another portfolio in the future, I think it will be uh, something completely different and a, a different type uh, take on things. So if that ever happens, we'll see. Uh, next up, Dear Pigeon, how would one lone indebted, worn out, wine-loving soul clinging to the last bits of her creativity, reinvents herself, become locally famous, and land a sweet pad on the beaches of Sandy, California for the rest of her days? Many thanks, Allison from uh, New York. All right, so let's take this one thing at a time. Uh, loans, yeah, I, I've got these two. Everyone's got loans or debt or something like that. And as long as you have a timeline schedule, you'll be able to um, pay them off eventually, so no worries. Uh, if you do have a little extra money um, on the side, though, uh, think about uh, checking out. A friend recommended these sites to me, HSBC Direct and IMG Direct. And what these are are high interest savings accounts. Um, they're online only, but they're also FDIC insured, and because they're online only, they have a higher interest rate than you would, say, in a normal bank, like Bank of America or something like that. So it's definitely worth checking out um, to make a little extra money on the side. Um, feeling worn out? Drink lots of water. Um, listen to the radio or podcast while you work to keep things interesting. I like to listen to classical music, uh, Yo-Yo Ma, he's the man. And uh, if you have a laptop, you're not tied to your desk, uh, move around a little bit. And uh, I have, there's this seat I like to go to a lot at work, um, this right by the window, and it sort of overlooks uh, a street. And there's a playground, actually, a daycare center, uh, where all these kids are falling down and playing hide-and-go-seek and hopscotch. So that's always fun to look at while I'm, uh, you know, working on some stuff as well. It just mixes things up. Uh, for the wine-loving part, definitely come to Wine Country in San Francisco, and we will take care of that. Um, the creativity and reinventing yourself, yeah, I, as creative people, we are always cr uh, craving new sorts of challenges and things like that, and I would say if you don't already, carry around a sketchbook wherever you go, and uh, if during your commute uh, for public transit or um, you know before you go to bed, just sketch ideas out, new different ideas. Uh, that's how this idea, actually, to do this podcast thing came, was for just sketching out some ideas on the end Judah on the way back from uh, Embarcadero to Carlin Cole. So... Uh, local fame, all you have to do is get like three or four of your male friends to wear um, suits and, and sunglasses and have walkie-talkies with them and then go out somewhere uh, to a bar or a club or something like that and wear sunglasses and a hat or something like that and people are just going to take photos, they're going to think you're a celebrity and uh, you'll, you'll you know, get your picture in all the blogs and uh, paparazzi will be crazy and all that stuff so test that out, trust me it works. Not that I've done it before. Okay, just twice. Um, Sweet Pad in California part. This is an awesome site. Uh, check out housingmaps.com. It is a great resource that mixes up Google Maps with Craigslist. And you'll, for a visual learner like me, this is awesome because you can see all the different neighborhoods and where things um, pop up around there. So it's a when you're looking for your Sweet California Pad, that is the place to go. So, I hope that answers uh, your a million questions, Allison. Thank you very much. And uh, we'll see you in California soon, I hope. Uh